ESRC has been doing an incredible job in terms of giving diversity to their motherboards. In those terms, we have ITX with all possible platforms, micro ATX and ATX boards, which come in all shapes and sizes, just by what I mentioned before. So today we're going to have a micro ATX uh, motherboard, which is ASRock B760MPG Riptide. Now this board is designed for Intel Core 12th and 13th generation processors with uh, LGA1700. Now the design is definitely something interesting since PG Riptide really does look uh, quite nice and if you remember the review of uh, Z790 PG Riptide you'll see the similarities right on front. So we have here a board that uh, can go into a smaller builds and you might have already seen it. I used it in uh, past videos like uh, Jones Bow uh, D31 mesh screen and Jones Bow CR3000 uh, uh, CPU air cooler, right? And without a doubt, it is quite interesting board. Now, when we go through some details, what you need to know, we have 14 plus one plus one power phase design. Uh, we have pre-installed IO shield, which most likely it's already uh, normal on all ASRock motherboards that it's pre-installed and that's quite uh, cool. We have four DDR5 DIMMs, uh, expansion slots uh, PCI 4.0 times 16, one PCI 4.0 times one and one MKE for Wi-Fi. Uh, integrated graphic cards, so we have connections on the I.O. panel as well, we'll get to that part later on. Uh, talking about storage, we have uh, four SATA 3, two Hyper M.2 PCI Gen 4x4, USBs, we have two USB 3.2 Generation 1 Type-C, one rear, one front, five USB 3.2 Generation 1 Type-A, three rear, two front, six USB 2.0, four rear, two front. Uh, for the audio, we have uh, Realtek ALC897 7.1 channel HD audio codec with Nahimic audio, LAN is Dragon 2.5G, and time to go to the IO part. We have HDMI and DisplayPort connection, two USB 2.0, then PS2 mouse and keyboard port, two more USB 2.0, USB 3.2 Generation 1 Type A, USB 3.2 Generation 1 Type C, 2.5. Uh, G LAN, 2 USB 3.2 generation 1 and for the audio in, out and microphone. So it's uh, kind of quite interesting that this uh, smaller motherboard is quite nicely packed. Now when we take into consideration we have three addressable RGB headers and one RGB header. You can control the lights and everything that is connected on those headers uh, through ASRock Polychrome Sync. Then we have four PWM headers for your fans. M.2 Armor passive heatsink for the first M.2 slot uh, beneath the CPU socket. For the EPS connections, one 4-pin and one 8-pin, that's 2 times 4-pin. Uh, also standard 24-pin and uh, that's all when we're talking about, of course, HD audio. We have front panel jacks and uh, use one USB uh, 2.0 on the front for the front connections. And we have four DDR5 DIMMs, as already mentioned, and it can go up to 7200 MHz OC. It supports uh, Intel Hybrid Technology, Intel Turbo Boost Max 3.0 Technology, uh, Intel Thermal Velocity Boost, Intel Adaptive Boost Technology, and ASRock Hyper BCLK Engine. The maximum capacity of system memory is 192 GB, and it supports Intel XMP 3.0. The HDMI is 2.1 TMDS compatible, supports HDCP uh, 2.3 and maximum resolution is up to 4K 60Hz, while the display port is 1.4 with DSC compressed, supports HDSCP 2.3 and maximum resolution is up to 8K 60Hz or 5K 120Hz. For the software we have three options, you have ASRock Motherboard uh, Utility, Phantom Gaming Tuning, then we have ASRock Phantom Gaming LAN software and ASRock Polychron Sync. Now this is the case that I've been talking about where I use this motherboard. So this is a Jones Bow D31 uh, mesh screen and uh, it fits perfectly, right? Uh, I paired up the motherboard with the ASRock ARC A770 Phantom Gaming and it goes quite nice both together. Let's put it that way. So pairing up an Intel GPU with an Intel processor in this range, what I did here is quite all right. So uh, in those terms, we have Intel Core i5-13400F and the, and the GPU is already mentioned, so 
there's that and we're going to go through some benchmarks uh, unfortunately because of the huge cooler you can't see uh, the motherboard and how it looks but thankfully we have close-ups so you get more idea about the design now let's start with benchmarks i use kingston fury renegade ddr5 rgb 2 times 16 gigs at 64,000 megahertz cl32 read speeds went up to 95,582 write speeds go up to 85,572 and copy goes up to 86,793 latency is 75.1 nanoseconds Inside we have Kingston KC 3004TB, in Crystal Disk Mark read goes up to 7059MB per second, write speed goes up to 65096. Out of this benchmark read speeds go up to 6.63GB per second while the write speeds go up to 6.33GB per second. In the benchmark uh, we have for the CPU bedroom 0 0.289 gb million uh, samples per second for the supercar 1.023 million samples per second and the a770 9.099 and for the supercar 19.549 then switching to corona 1.3 since we have a processor that is as such uh, the time was 1 minute and 50 seconds race per second 4.4 million uh, AIDA64 uh, Extreme Edition System Stability Test. What I want you to do here is check the thermals. Even though I already shown you the how Jonesbow in this uh, case and CPU work together, it was outstanding. So the CPU went up to 55 degrees Celsius, which isn't much concerning when we're talking about the processor. But the VRMs is something quite interesting. So the thermals on the VRMs, even though we didn't have a strong CPU, went up to, I think, 47-ish, if I remember correctly. But you have a close-up so you can see that exactly. So 47-ish on the VRMs and only the bottom ones, the top ones near the EPS connection are even lower. Clock speed on the processor was uh, 3900 MHz and the GPU thermals went up to 63 degrees. Uh, the GPU actually stays at those thermals and it's quite all right. So it's time to go to Cinebench R23. Now these benchmarks don't actually show the true nature of this motherboard. I think we could go easily with 13600 and 13700 uh, processor and I think it would do the job without overclocking. But regardless of that, uh, Cinebench R23 has already started. Uh, it, uh, the processor went everywhere from 52 to 58 degrees Celsius. Uh, that also goes for the clock speeds from uh, 3700 to 4100 megahertz. Uh, the Cinebench scores, the lowest point, I think it was 13,321, but the highest was the first one going up to 14,312. I wish it stayed there at that uh, Cinebench score and just continue with the rest of the nine ones. Uh, but uh, regardless of that, it did started to go towards that with uh, last three uh, peaking at 13,727. So what I can conclude about this motherboard and this processor combination. The processor is definitely not enough for this motherboard because this board can definitely push a higher processor as already stated 13600K or 13700K and this would be an ideal in this scenario if you're looking for a good micro ATX board that can fit inside this case because this case is definitely an outstanding one and I already said that in that video but uh, regardless of that if you're really looking for something that will pair up with this board why not go with 13600K or 13700K which makes more difference switching from i5 to i7 than just sticking to i5 that's almost similar uh, regardless of that big thumbs up again for asrock and uh, varieties of sizes form factors when we take into consideration that not many brands or at all have such varieties when we're talking about itx micro atx and atx motherboards even eatx uh, in those terms so that's quite cool and i have to admit uh, packed with so much things so much connect so many connections uh, usb ports io ports as well and finally the design i mean if you go and choose uh, i don't know a certain design 
it definitely follows from ITX to EATX even. So that's uh, quite outstanding. Uh, I'll put the links for the ASRock B760 MPG Riptide in the description below. And if you want to go with an ATX version by any chance, ASRock Z790 PG Riptide will also be linked in the description below. So you can combine depending on your case, depending on your processor and depending what you want and what you desire and of course the budget. So that will be all for today guys. Thanks for sticking by. If you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button. It means the world to me. And of course, if you're already there, click the like button for the video and notification bell so you don't miss any future content. Well, because I'll be doing a custom build with this board and this GPU in a micro ATX case, of course. So that will be all for today. See you next time, guys. Hopefully, bye-bye.